I consider myself a perceptive and open-minded person, and as a teacher, I seek new ways of reaching my students and providing authentic learning experiences. A few years ago, I was offered the opportunity to teach in a French immersion program. In this program, children learn all subjects entirely in French up to grade three. This was a new area for me, and I came with some preconceived notions of the families that enrolled in these programs. Statistics show that in general, students in French immersion programs tend to come from a higher socioeconomic bracket than non-immersion students. Parents are often college educated and heavily invested in the program. I stepped into my classroom with these preconceptions, not realizing how they would affect my teaching practices, but they became quickly apparent. I was particularly proud of my methodology of using paragraph dictates or spelling tests. These paragraphs were carefully constructed as a means of introducing and teaching new vocabulary, sentence structure, punctuation, and grammar in a story-like context. Dictates were sent home with students on Monday with simple instructions to parents on how to practice during the week. A test followed that Friday. The first time I tested students, I was shocked to see the results. Although many students were successful, about a third of my students failed miserably. I persisted with this methodology thinking perhaps it was simply a new format students were getting used to. But after a few weeks, I realized it was something else I had overlooked. I had incorrectly assumed all students would have parental support at home practicing for their dictates. The reality was that about a third of my students, though perfectly capable, were not getting the support at home. I based this assumption on statistics that indicated a higher socioeconomic status of parents of French immersion students. My generalization was incorrect, and I realized I had to change my approach in order to give all my students an equal chance of success. I started allotting time to review and practice the dictates in class. I used the time to reinforce vocabulary, grammar, punctuation, and sentence structure. Students highlighted their new words and color-coded different grammar elements. The results were immediate. Students who were once failing were now meeting acceptable standards. So what lessons did I learn? I learned that diversity is to be expected in every classroom and that I can never assume anything about my, my students' backgrounds or home life. Also, each class is unique and so should be my approach. I also learned that it is my job in the classroom, when faced with a problem, to keep an open mind and to actively search for meaningful solutions to make my students successful. Another lesson is that I must always engage in reflection, which means the capacity of a teacher to think creatively, imaginatively, and at times, self-critically about classroom practice. Overall, in order to become an empowered teacher, I should remain reflective, a problem solver, and one who enhances my students' learning. As teachers, we must remember that through teaching, we should be continuously learning and growing, not only for the betterment of our students, but also ourselves.